Now, in May 2000, 26 British soldiers were airlifted deep into the heart of the African jungle at the height of the bloody civil war in Sierra Leone. They were sent into combat against 2,000 rebels from the notorious Revolutionary United Front who'd reneged on a peace treaty and were brutalising anyone who crossed their path. Intended to last just 48 hours and kitted out with pitiful supplies of ammunition, the mission ended up lasting 16 days and was dubbed what the rebels call Operation Kill British. Well, Sergeant Steve Heaney was awarded the Military Cross for taking control of the battle and has written a book detailing what happened during the siege and he's with me. Steve, good evening. Good evening. Tell us your expectations when you first arrived in that scene. Initially our brief was that we were to hold that particular village for 48 hours with a view to stopping any rebel movement moving from the north of the country to south into the airport and then hinder the evacuation process of British nationals. So our expectation was that we would be there for 48 hours and then we would be airlifted back to the central hub, which was Lungi Airport. And at that point, how far away did you know the rebels were? We'd received varying estimates. Um, the initial reports were they were up to 50 kilometres north. But as we were there for a few days, people from the outlying villages started to migrate into our village under the safety and the protection of ourselves and they were bringing various numbers from 20 to 10 kilometres till eventually reports that they were five kilometres north of us. Right, and at that point you knew there were 26 of you and 2,000 of them? Yeah, our initial intelligence reports had suggested that they had access to 2,000 rebel fighters and that's what they would use to push south to take the airfield. You talked about the village that you were close to initially and then the movement of other villagers towards the one that you were in. Tell us about the, the forming of relationships that you inevitably had to do with some of those people. It was key. After the first 48 hours, when we were told that the mission was now evolving and that our time there would be endless, it was very important that we fostered relationships with them, knowing that alone we would not be able to quell that amount of, um, of, of rebel forces moving to us. So we had to use that relationship to help us to bolster our defences. How difficult was it to foster that relationship? Because there must have been an element of, of mistrust initially, wasn't there? Yeah, very early on. I mean, we landed in the village um, completely unannounced. We were told we were going into a possible hostile landing. So we thought from the moment we got off the helicopters that we, we may be fighting. When that didn't materialise and the activity in the village settled down, they, they looked to us um, with open eyes and a bit of trepidation until, we, until they realised that we weren't going to harm them. Previous to that, men in villages with guns were usually there to slaughter. There's a lovely photograph there that we've just put on the screen, actually, of uh, presumably the, the fostering process going on. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, what about the moment when you then actually had to confront the people that you were there to deal with and, and the level of brutality that they had already demonstrated in what they had done up until that moment? It was, it was absolutely crucial to us that we, that we stopped them at all costs and in the back of our minds was the thought that if we were to fall into their hands um, then what would happen to us? Um, and also, as we grew to, to, to build this relationship with the villagers, it became central to our thinking that we protected them at all costs. How much did you know about those rebels at that point? Very little. Um, our initial intelligence reports prior to moving to Sierra Leone suggested that they were um, unorganised, disorganised, um, fueled on drugs, uh, bathed in vats of blood to protect them. What we actually found was that as the, the government of the, was crumbling and the Sierra Leone army was, was migrating to these rebel groups for fear, of, uh, for fear of, of death themselves and bringing with them their weaponry, they mm. became quite a potent force with trained soldiers, automatic rifles, grenade launches. So they were quite a potent force. I, I mean, you hinted this in that answer, but I mean, people will, will remember some of the, the details of what went on, but there was a real chance at that point, wasn't there, that the capital, Freetown, would fall to these people? Absolutely. I think, without doubt, that without the intervention and the actions 
of the task force that um, the capital would have fell and it would have led to to slaughter on an industrial scale. What was the most difficult part of what you did, the most frightening part of what you did? I think the most frightening part was the realisation that we were on our own and that it was 26 of us. We, we were informed that the QRF was coming but again as the operation ev mutated for those back in Lungi Airfield and their responsibility to the capital became very clear, it, it re the realisation to us was that that support might not come as quickly as promised. Mm. So we had to hold them. So in the end, how did you manage to overpower them? I would, I would like to say through pure tenacity. I think it was 26 men who were confident in their abilities. We'd prepared the ground to uh, the best of our ability. We'd made it very difficult for the rebels to get close to us without us being able to inflict enough casualties uh, to dissuade them that, uh, of pushing further. Mm. I mentioned in the introduction that you were awarded the Military Cross for courage and leadership. What did that mean to you? It was a tremendous award. Um, I was stood alongside 26 of the bravest men I've ever been with. So to be singled out is, 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 is tremendous recognition, but it as you know, it is difficult to award 25 gallantry medals or 26 gallantry medals. So my medal was a, was a tribute to the actions of the men that night. Mm. And when you reflect on it now, it's what, 13, 14 years ago? What do you think? I was think we, we were lucky. I think we got out, um, we came out of it very, very lucky. Um, and I think, as I said, due to the pure tenacity uh, of the men who were prepared to risk their lives in defence of that village. Uh, very good to have you in, uh, Steve. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much. And Steve Hinney there.